Uh, well, welcome to this uh, webinar about the preseason camp for the Colorado State uh, University Marching Band. We're very excited that you're all here. We have, I see a few CSU students attending, which is great to see all of your faces um, for the first time this summer. And we'll be going through just some information about preseason camp and hopefully hearing from some of them as well, potentially. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Taylor in just a moment, but if you have any questions throughout the meeting, feel free to either uh, raise your hand with the raise your hand feature. You can also um, unmute when it gets to that point or just drop them in the chat and I'll be monitoring that. Um, my name is Megan Taylor and I am the athletic band support specialist at Colorado State. So you might have received a few emails from me or will, will be receiving emails from me in the future. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Taylor, our director. Great. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Uh, yes. Thank you all for being here. Wonderful uh, to have you this afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the country. Um, we will be primarily talking about preseason camp, what to expect and things that you might need to be prepared for. And we've invited several of our um, uh, 2022 student leaders, drum majors and section leaders uh, to be in attendance today to maybe answer some of your questions as well. And I'd love to have them on deck. If you guys don't mind, uh, just be ready to jump in when those types of questions arise. Uh, but of course, if there's any other questions you may have um, about the band in general, registration, all of those other things, don't hesitate to ask those questions as well. Um, we'll have plenty of time, I believe, at the end of this uh, session to cover any topics that we did not cover and that, that you're still wanting to know about. Um, so first off, I'd like to kind of say, you know, our preseason camp uh, for a college marching band is not that different than it is for a high school marching band. Um, and uh, what you can expect in general is what you're already used to. It is uh, 12 hour grueling days uh, in you know, the heat of August, though I, I do know that the heat of August in Colorado is a little different than the heat of August in some other places. Um, but uh, it's going to be, uh, it'll be a very busy week for us. Some, uh, some schools will do a week, a week and a half, some will do two weeks. Um, our camp comes in right at about a week, unless you're color guard and drum line, in which case you have two extra days. Um, so we'll start there. Uh, the first day of preseason camp for drum line and color guard is Thursday, uh, August 11th. Uh, we will start that morning at 8 a.m. with a, a very quick registration, uh, just check everyone in, uh, and then we'll sign out equipment and then dive right into um, learning the things we need to learn for the fall. Uh, both of those days, that Thursday and Friday, August 11th and 12th, are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. with an hour and a half dinner, an hour and a half lunch break during that day. Um, the preseason camp for everyone else in the band, that would be all the wind players, begins Saturday morning, August 13th. Um, that morning, again, we'll begin with registration, and all of our color guard and drum line will also join us that day to complete their registration. And at that time, we will then uh, sign out uniforms, um, uh, check out flip folders, uh, make sure everyone uh, has an opportunity to buy the marching band shoes that they need um, and all of those other things. And that process will last uh, several hours. It's just a, a come, come as you're ready sort of thing. You come in, start the process, move around the room, check in all the places you need to check in. When you're done, you're done. Um, and then uh, we, we will begin our first rehearsal and, and band full band meeting that afternoon after lunch. So the beginning of band camp, as you can see, is a little bit different for drumline and color guard and then, and then the rest of the wind players. But in general, uh, once we hit August 13th, it's the same for everyone at that point. Every day of preseason camp will start at 8 a.m. with the exception of Sunday. Sunday the 14th, we will take that morning off uh, to give the drumline and color guard a chance to, to, to rest up. And I, it'll give our wind players and everyone that's moving into dorms a little extra time to get moved in and settled. Um, but then and the rest of the week, as I mentioned, does start at 8 a.m. We again have an hour and a half lunch and an hour and a half dinner break each day. Something new for preseason camp this year is we're inviting food trucks to come to our uh, parking lot right outside our marching band field to provide an op a uh, another opportunity for meals. Um, a lot of students will bring their own food for lunch or dinner, or they'll go off campus to a local dining establishment. This will maybe um, um, uh, give people a little more time uh, without having to get in our car and go somewhere else for food during the day. They can stay on campus, uh, hopefully make it a little easier. Uh, so those, those food trucks will be available as well. And we are going to uh, invite several and um, 
try to work with them to provide cost effective, uh, limited menus that they can prepare quickly uh, instead of there being long lines uh, and, and people getting uh, their, their food at the last minute before the next rehearsal starts. Um, Preseason camp uh, is again st starts on Saturday the 13th and goes for one week until the next Saturday the 20th. Uh, 8 a.m. to 9, 8 p.m. every day, again, except for that one Sunday. Uh, we take Sunday the 21st off. That is uh, our large ensemble auditions, symphony orchestra, our concert bands, um, choirs, jazz bands, all those things are doing those auditions that weekend. That uh, And then classes begin on Monday, uh, the 22nd of August. Once classes begin, we are in our normal marching band rehearsal um, pattern at that point. So um, that, that preseason camp, uh, again, is just one week plus the two extra days. It's quick. It's very efficient. You will learn a lot in a very short amount of time. Uh, but the great news is everyone that's coming in uh, has some experience playing and or marching. And so it's, uh, it's, 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 it's not that bad. We, we, we learn fast and we uh, get a lot done in that week. Um, we'll take uh, this point now to kind of talk about um, what do you need to know to make sure um, you are prepared for preseason camp? So our drumline and color guard have already uh, done auditions. We are still accepting virtual auditions through the end of June for those two groups. Um, so you still have an opportunity to do that. Once, uh, once you've been accepted into those groups, uh, you will be contacted by the uh, instructors, our drumline instructor or color guard instructors about the things that you need to be practicing and have ready for the first day of your camps on the 11th. For the wind players, uh, there is no pre-audition, and we will have everyone the first day of band camp do a playing uh, test, basically. That will be used for our sort of chair seating uh, within each section. Uh, for the sections with multiple parts, like trumpets, uh, that'll be what, how we determine who's playing what part, first, second, or third. Um, and then uh, that'll also then kind of go into just our sort of ranking within each uh, section. Uh, no one will be cut. Uh, from that audition, if you're a win player, um, it, in the rare instance that someone comes in and actually honestly doesn't know how to play the instrument they said they could play, uh, there, there might be a situation in that in that case, but um, that, that, that shouldn't be a problem. If, if you played your instrument in high school, you should be fine to go. Uh, the playing exam, what we'll be playing for that on that first day of band camp is our fight song, the Colorado State fight song. That'll be available and in, in, uh, emailed to you and also available for download from our website. Uh, if you just spend a little bit of time playing that over the summer, come in, play it for us on that first day, you're all set. It does not have to be memorized that first day. Though I will say, the faster you memorize that, the, 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 the more time you'll have to spend memorizing everything else that you'll need to memorize. Uh, so that will take care of uh, all of the auditions and or playing tests that we have for everybody those first few days. If you, uh, like me, uh, try to spend as much of your time during the summer relaxing, I might encourage you to spend a little bit of time making sure that you're uh, active, that you are um, um, making sure that you're physically ready for band camp. Um, you know, from the very first day, we will be outside marching, uh, kind of reviewing all those marching fundamentals uh, that, that everybody uh, does in high school but everyone does a little differently. So we'll spend a lot of time making sure that we are all doing it the same way. Um, it'll be, again, just very physical, uh, all the things that you're used to doing um, in, in, in any band camp. Um, uh, dance team, color guard, we'll spend a lot of time doing body work, learning, our, learning the dance routines, the flag routines, all those things will be, will be done as well. Um, the you know, things that we all need to be aware of are uh, that we'll be playing a lot. So if you are a wind instrument or a percussionist, you don't want to walk in the first day of band camp having not played for the last two months. If you are a person that would typically borrow a school instrument, like those large instruments, uh, tubas, uh, baritones, mellophones, um, we will have those available for you to rent the first day of uh, band camp. Though we'll check those out at registration. You may not have access to one during the summer, and we are not able to rent those out to you until you are a student here in, in the fall. So um, my recommendation is at least have a mouthpiece. If you can get your hands on a mouthpiece to, to, to buzz on, play on a little bit. Uh, if you can go back to your high school, maybe ask to borrow one for a week or two to just uh, make sure that everything is working again before you show up that first day at band camp. That will help you out. Um, um, again, you're not going to get cut from the way you're playing uh, if you haven't played, but you will find life a lot better if you're 
if your chops are in shape when you first walk in the door. Um, and the same thing with, with our dancers, our color guard, if you're staying physically fit, physically active during the summer, those first, that first week of 12 hour days will feel a lot better uh, if you're uh, physically prepared for those things. Um, I will also say, oh, quick question. Yeah, Brianna, uh, we will be playing probably a portion of the fight song uh, that will be di dictated the day of. I would be prepared to play the whole thing, uh, but we probably won't take repeats and, 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 and things like that. Um, the other big thing about being ready for preseason camp is, is hydration. Uh, you need to make sure that you are hydrated. And as I've, I've told bands for, for many years, you hydrate today for tomorrow. So one thing you want to do in preparation for band camp is make sure that you are eating and drinking well a whole week before band camp begins. And that way you walk in the, uh, the, the door of the front day already hydrated, your body ready to, to do those things it needs to do. We will take ample water breaks. There are water bottle filling stations available in the uh, music building. Um, but uh, again, you don't want to wait until you feel thirsty to start drinking. Uh, you need to make sure you're, you're very proactively drinking. I'm going to take just a minute here and give uh, some of our section leaders and uh, drum majors an opportunity to chime in. Uh, what are some things uh, physically, section leaders, uh, that um, you feel like you need uh, would help uh, students be best prepared for those first few days of preseason camp? And you can just unmute and chime right on in. So my name is Leah. Can you guys hear me okay? We can. Awesome. I'm going to be one of two baritone section leaders for next year. Um, something to keep in mind about preseason camp, especially coming off of last year with our COVID season, we weren't really marching. And so when we started those first couple days, it definitely felt like a lot. Um, and so definitely something to keep in mind as much as you can prepare it's still going to be a lot off the bat. And so definitely be mentally prepared for like a big week. But um, just remember, you've got friends around you. As much as this leadership puts on a good face, you know, it's hard on us too. And so um, definitely let us know if you have any worries, especially as it gets started throughout the week. But just remember, hopefully you've done this before or if it's something new. We're all going through it and um, we all have to hold our horns up and we'll get through it to be that awesome band that we want to be. Great. Thank you, Leah. Absolutely. Any other section leaders want to chime in? Yeah, I'll jump in real quick. Uh, my name is Catherine. I'm a drum major for the marching band. Um, I Everything that we've covered so far is great and super important. I would also add, um, especially if you're moving from farther away, that there might be a big elevation change for you. And that might be something to get used to, especially going into a week with a lot of physical activity. Um, obviously, you can't necessarily prepare yourself for an elevation change, but just making sure that you're taking care of yourself with that, like just eating well, um, drinking lots of water, that's going to help with all of that. I'll add to that lots of sleep as well, for sure. Nathan, did you have something you want to throw in there? Yeah, I was just going out for Catherine also with elevation. Um, if we get sunburnt a lot easier, um, I don't know if that's just maybe certain clothes that cover more, but also are breathable, um, that type of preparation and just sunscreen in general, um, it does get, uh, you do get sunburned pretty easily. I'm also Nathan. Um, I am the one of the three saxophone section leaders for this upcoming season. Thank you, Nathan. Yeah, the, the atmosphere is actually a little thinner because of our elevation and the sun's rays do get through and uh, will burn. Some of the worst sunburns I've seen have been at elevation uh, here in uh, Colorado and Wyoming. So definitely want to protect yourself. Loose fitting uh, clothing that covers a lot. Hats. Hats are very big, uh, very important. And of course, sunscreen. You want to make sure that we're prepared for all those things. Good. So you know, that sort of will take care of some of the physical uh, things that we need to make sure that we're paying attention to. Um, another part of that is uh, footwear. I want to make sure, and I know there's a lot of parents on here as well. We want to make sure that everybody has proper footwear for marching rehearsals. That uh, What that means basically is a closed toe, closed heel, lace up uh, athletic shoe. 
Uh, that's that's what we need everyone to wear. We no sandals, no Crocs, no bare feet. Uh, we got to make sure that we're uh, wearing appropriate footwear for the activity that we're doing. Um, I'd recommend something that's not brand new, but maybe just a little bit broken in, because um, we'll be spending a lot of time on our feet, uh, just about 12 hours a day on our feet. So we want to make sure we've got comfortable, uh, supportive shoes, um, again, that lace up and that uh, are, are closed toe and closed heel so that we can do all the marching technique uh, properly. So do make sure that we're aware of that and that we are taking care of that as well. Uh, one big question I'm seeing over here in the chat has to do with early move in. Uh, I also saw hotels. Uh, hotels for Drumline and Color Guard will be provided that first Thursday and Friday night only. Those are the only two days that the band will be providing that. That is at a hotel that is really walkable to the uh, music building. Um, it's a couple of blocks away, but, but it is walkable in the morning uh, if that's the way you would like to do that. Or of course, you can always drive and park at the uh, UCA, the University Center for the Arts, where our marching practice takes place. Uh, for everyone else, starting on that Saturday morning, we ha you have the option to move in early to your dorm if you were going to be staying in a dorm. And uh, move in is, is open to you starting at 8 a.m. that morning, August the 13th. That is also when our registration begins. Um, we request that you come and register with us first. That is the thing that will take the least amount of time. Uh, we can get you through in probably about 30 minutes tops uh, to do all the things you need to do. And then you have the rest of the morning until after the lunch break to move into your dorm. Um, the reason why we stress that is uh, by doing this early move in, you were uh, missing a lot of the crowds, um, all, you know, the thousands of other people that will be moving in later that week, uh, vying for parking spaces, uh, elevators, uh, all that stuff. You could avoid all of that by moving in early. There is a charge for that. Uh, that is that charge uh, has does have to be covered by the student that is choosing to move in early, and it is seventy dollars a day. But that does include three meals a day. Um, so uh, if you uh, do choose to move in early, you get breakfast, lunch, and dinner provided in the university's dining halls on those days also. And that's before everyone else uh, everyone else's meal plan kicks in. Even if you don't have a meal plan, you would still get meals for those days that you do the early move in. So $70 for a room and three meals a day is actually a, a pretty good deal. Um, then uh, once, uh, once the uh, the rest of the university housing opens up to, to move in. Uh, at that point, you stop paying the extra. And I, I believe that might be Monday or Tuesday that week of band camp. So there's uh, at least two days, Saturday and Sunday, that you'd have to pay $70 and possibly also Monday. And, and Ms. Taylor, we can we can verify that uh, with housing to find out exactly which day the um, university housing stops paying, stops charging the extra $70 fee. That'll all be handled through university housing. If you uh, wish to take advantage of that opportunity to move in early, um, then uh, you will follow the link that they will send to you uh, to, to register for that early for that early move in. I, need to, I do need to stress, if you do not choose to move in early uh, and, and just move in during the regular time that the rest of the university moves in, um, you cannot miss uh, uh, preseason camp rehearsals to move in. So it would have to be done in dinner and lunch breaks and at, you know, after we're done for the day um, in order to make that work. So we do recommend it, though, again, it, it, there is a, an extra charge involved. That will get charged directly to the students' accounts uh, and, and, and added to that um, and possibly then covered uh, uh, through financial aid if, if, if you choose to do that. Um, all right, so we've kind of covered the first day, uh, the registration, uh, what's going to happen there. Another part of registration will be uh, your opportunity to purchase your marching band shoes, as I mentioned. That is ha handled through a local music store. Then we invite them to come to our uh, rehearsal hall, and they'll set up a table with uh, lots of different sizes so you can find exactly the right size, and then you order that through them. Uh, we are still trying to verify, confirm uh, the price. In the past, it's been $45 for a pair of those marching shoes. We march white shoes, and that is a specific brand and uh, make of that shoe, and it does need to be that shoe. That will be that information is available uh, in our preseason uh, information online, and uh, that you'll be emailed as well. Um, so it, you you may buy those on your own ahead of time if you like. It's possible you could find it a dollar or two cheaper, uh, though you'd have to pay shipping. So it probably comes out in the wash. Um, and uh, the local music sorts Boomer Music here in Fort Collins does a great job. Of 
of sizing everyone, um, getting those orders in, and then getting those shoes back to us before we need them the first time for our first home game. So um, I just recommend using them. Uh, returning members uh, have to have the same thing. Uh, if their shoes are still in good shape, then they don't have to buy new shoes. But if, they, if they've worn out, then uh, returning members would also have to be, uh, purchase those shoes as well. Um, so yeah, that covers that. Um, if you are a music major, music major or music minor, and you use a school instrument for marching band, that would be our that would be any of our brass instruments, uh, percussion, so on and so forth. There is no extra fee for checking out an instrument. If you are not a music major or a music minor, then there is a fifty dollar uh, checkout fee for our school instruments. All brass, that's trumpets, mellophones, trombones, baritones, and tubas are required to use uh, a school instrument. Uh, that is because we all, we use uh, brass lacquer because we are green and gold, and so our instruments are gold. Um, and it's to make sure that we're all playing on the same uh, level and quality of instrument. The trumpets are Yamaha Zeno trumpets. Uh, the trombones are Yamaha. The mellophones, we've got six brand new ones. Those are all Yamahas. Um, uh, sousaphones, all of those things, high quality instruments, that they're fantastic. Uh, you're going to want to use them. So, um, but just to make sure that we are aware of that, that all takes place again, that first day of registration uh, for all of those checkouts. Hopefully you'll also receive at that time, your uh, band t-shirt, uh, band ball cap, um, and some other uh, uh, Colorado State Marching Band branded apparel that is all provided to you by the band. The, no, those things come to you at no, no extra charge. Uh, that, those will also be received at registration uh, the first day of band camp. That's August 13th. Uh, so Color Garden Drumline, you'll have two days and then you'll get that stuff on Saturday. All right. Um, so uh, moving forward, a day at um, preseason camp, what does that look like? Again, I mentioned we start at 8 a.m. on a normal rehearsal day. We do three hour blocks. So 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. is our first block. That will usually be, weather permitting, outside marching fundamental rehearsal or drill learning rehearsal. Then we take an hour and a half break. That hour and a half is 11 to 1230. That'll be lunch. Uh, lunch is on, every, uh, you're on your own for all lunches. Uh, then uh, from uh, 12.30 to 3.30 is our afternoon block. Typically, we will do that inside um, or in the or around the building in the shade music rehearsals. Uh, those will be uh, sectionals, full group music rehearsals, uh, full, full percussion uh, rehearsals. Uh, color guard will still be advancing still be doing their rehearsals and all those things so generally music rehearsal in the afternoon and uh, out of the sun as much as we can then we take another hour and a half break for dinner that's 3 30 to 5 and then at five o'clock we do our afternoon block uh five to eight and that's our last three hour block that is again generally an outdoor music rehearsal uh, after the first two or three days of band camp that will turn into a full ensemble rehearsal where we uh, start putting together our uh, marching shows uh, that's our pregame and one of our six uh, shows that we'll do for halftime during the year uh, if you don't know we do a different halftime show every home game so that's uh, for a total of six different halftime shows pregame is the same uh, every week. So that's, you know, again, sort of the uh, the daily schedule. Uh, within that schedule, there'll be little tweaks here and there to do a little bit more of this, a little bit less of that. But those three, three hour blocks are what you can expect. So nine hours of rehearsal uh, every day for seven days, essentially. Um, we have our very first performance during that week of preseason camp. On the Friday, the end towards the end of camp, we will perform for the university convocation. Uh, weather permitting, that'll happen in Canvas Stadium uh, with uh, all of, uh, well, a good majority of the university incoming freshmen and a lot of other students as well, uh, with um, all of our administration and uh, a lot of our faculty from the university present. The band plays for that. We play uh, our alma mater, fight song, and a couple of other tunes as well from our seats in the stadium. And then uh, the next evening, Saturday evening, we'll have our first athletics pep rally. And that'll also be in Canvas Stadium. Uh, this last year, they had, I think, six or 7,000 students in attendance for that first pep rally. So those are that, that is preseason camp in a nutshell. Once we hit uh, the end of that week uh, after that athletics pep rally, we're done until, again, classes begin and we start our regular schedule after that. 
All right. So uh, lots of information I've, I've given to you here. Uh, this is a great time for questions. Let's start specifically with questions about preseason camp and uh, barring having any of those, then we can move on to some more general questions. We have about nine minutes left in our uh, time here. So don't, don't be shy if you want to do the little hand race thing or just jump right in with your question. I'd be happy to take them. I see the um, Malia, the dining halls are open once uh, the dorms have opened for people to start moving into. Uh, if you do, if you do early move in, uh, they're open to you when you move in on Saturday. Otherwise, they are open to everyone with a meal plan uh, starting uh, that when when dorms open for for the general public. Once classes start, rehearsal is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 4.30 to 6. So four days a week for an hour and a half. Yeah, there is a little bit of conflict uh, with freshman orientations. Uh, we, uh, we, we will set out a schedule for when freshmen uh, need to be other places uh, for major orientation things. Uh, there are a lot of uh, college orientations that include just like get togethers and get to know you's and meals and things that uh, not everyone has to be at, but we, want, we make sure everyone's able to make it to the important things, the information meetings, uh, the, the registration, course registration meetings, all those things. We make sure that freshmen are able to make those things. Uh, for flute and piccolo players, you may play the instrument you're most comfortable on. So if that's flute, you may play your flute for that playing test. But then after that, you will play piccolo. We, we do not march any flutes. It's all piccolos. And we do have school piccolos for you to, to use if, if you would like those. We don't have any summer sectionals. We will have no rehearsals uh, happen before preseason camp begins. Yes, there will be an email, uh, several emails over the over the summer with all of this information. We have a preseason newsletter. Uh, it's an informational guide that covers a lot of this information and much more that will be coming to you before the end of June. So you'll have all of this information in hand in a really pretty uh, graphically designed uh, handbook. It's, it's really wonderful. So you'll, you'll be getting that as well. Uh, yeah, I, I said, great. Thank you guys for answering uh, some of these questions for me. Uh, the, we do not travel to any away games um, with very rare uh, exceptions. Um, next year, 2023, we're looking at going to the University of Wyoming for that game with, with the band, but that's uh, maybe once every other year that we do that. So just the home games and uh, any of those extra games that we would do, we would notify everybody well ahead of time that that's what's going to happen. Uh, well before the season starts. We do not have any saxophones to lend to, to anyone. We just don't own any. Uh, so saxophone players do have to um, provide their own. Uh, and we, we are actually, uh, uh, we are phasing out tenor saxophones specifically. So only students who have already marched in the band as a tenor saxophone player are, are uh, able to play tenor sax. Uh, alto sax is, is where um, I think we want to go with that. Um, and so if, if you do have questions about that, don't hesitate to email me directly and we can talk about that just a little bit more. We do have uh, section leaders will be contacting you. Uh, each section leaders will be getting uh, all of your information uh, in the next day, and they, you'll start getting lots of communications from your section leaders, and you can ask them lots of questions directly as well. And yeah, we are recording these webinars. Uh, today's uh, session is being recorded, and they will be uh, posted um, online, available for you to watch um, later, so that you can go back and catch some of this information that came very, very fast at you. Other questions? Uh, section leaders, drum major, I'd love to get uh, a little more information from you guys. If there's anything, uh, you, anything more you'd like to share, especially if you have uh, any information, if you've lived in a dorm and can remember what moving into do the dorm was like that first time, I'd love to hear just a little bit about that in the last minute or two that we have. Anybody have any information they'd like to share? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, as a freshman, especially if you're moving uh, farther away from home, like I came from Grand Junction, which is still in Colorado, but it felt like a big move for me my freshman year. This can be kind of a like stressful, busy time because it feels like everything is changing. So it is a little bit hard to balance 
I'm moving everything into a dorm room, my family's saying goodbye, and then you're going to band camp. It can feel a bit overwhelming, but at the same time, you get to start your college experience with something that you know really well, um, which is marching band and band camp. And I think something that uh, we all love, even though band camp can be like, you know, some long grueling days, but we all love it and we're excited to be together. So um, I would just say to take good care of yourself and um, you might not get everything moved in the first like hour that you're at CSU, but you'll have time. It's okay. Get good sleep and um, you'll have a great time at camp. So I've always been a commuter for three years. I lived in Loveland, which was about a 30 minute drive. So please feel free to contact me if you're worried about that. There's free parking on two sides of the music building with signs labeled diagonal parking. So if you're looking for free parking, you might want to show up a bit early, but you're welcome to park there, especially for the first week. There's also a parking lot at the UCA that you need a permit for. So if you're looking for a more permanent solution, I recommend looking that up on the CSU website. Another aspect to moving into the dorms, which I didn't get to do, but my friends did, was um, your roommate won't be there for until they move in. So that might be like a week that you get by yourself. So that might be a relaxing week and you might be able to move in some of your stuff and kind of put it wherever and not have to worry about keeping it to your side. Yeah, really great points, both of you. Thank you so much. Uh, in the last minute or two we've got here, I did want to answer a couple other questions. Color Guard does not have any more auditioning to do. Uh, so Malia, once you, you you are once you're taken into the group uh, from your summer audition, yeah, no extra audition there. You guys hit the ground running, and you are you are learning what you need to learn your first day. Miss um, Taylor, what what is the brand of piccolos that we are using? I think we have several Yamahas and several Pearls or some other brand i'm not sure but most of the ones we checked out last year were yamahas and they are they're they are an out outdoor specific all-weather piccolo um yeah. so they, they are they are uh, a plastic composite material uh with special pads that it's okay it's it's not as bad if they get wet um so uh you know again if, if you're using one of our piccolos and we do have plenty, I believe, for the section, um, then that's probably the way to go. Uh, the $50 rental fee is to cover maintenance. And if it if it gets broken, we can we can fix it and replace it for you. If you're using your own and something happens to it, then it's then it's completely on you. Um, and if you're renting a piccolo from like a local music store, yeah, there, there may be some some wear and tear issues that, you know, if, if they if you're using it outdoors and they're not anticipating that you're using it outdoors, they might not cover some things. So I again, I, I would use our piccolos if if that is um, uh, I would recommend our pickles. I'll put it that way. Um, great. Any other last minute questions? I did see uh, several questions again about moving in early and, and all of those things. Uh, you, University Housing has uh, has move in registration available on their websites, uh, and they and they've got the timetable for when um, regular move in uh, happens, and they they assign it. Uh, they they do a staggered assign. So like uh, you know you might move in on Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday depending on the order of, of when you get registered, and so you have to check with them on on how that works. Um, I believe they do like a general move in the the last week in right before classes begin, uh, but definitely recommend getting in earlier rather than later. Great, wonderful. Th guys, thank you for your questions. Um, uh, I'd love to thank uh, our section leaders and drum major and Ms. Taylor for uh, joining us today uh, to help out with these questions. If we didn't get to your question, uh, you can absolutely email us. All of our contact information is on our website um, and I'd love to answer your questions for you. We are going to Macy's soon. In the next couple of years, that that that'll happen. So we're we're looking forward to that. Uh, and yeah, there's so many questions. Thank you guys so much that we're about to time out, and it'll knock us out of here. But uh, look forward to having you all here in the fall. Please keep sending us your emails with your questions. I uh, want to make sure that everyone has all the information that they need. All right, thanks a lot, everybody, and go Rams.